So we spend $200 billion now. By 2020, we'll spend $900 billion a year in interest payments alone. We spend $700 billion today on the defense budget. And at that point, my friends, the country is no longer sustainable. The federal government can't work with a $900 billion interest payment. I saw Erskine Bowles and Alan Simpson uh, three weeks ago on the street corner right outside the Capitol. Talk to them a little bit about their debt commission. It's an issue that's motivated me, you can tell, since I've got to. And, and Erskine Bowles put it in a way that I hadn't heard put it before, and I think it's the most compelling two-sentence evaluation of our fiscal health. Right now, the receipts that we take in our tax receipts only cover Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Every other function of government, from the roads you drive on, to the FAA that guides your plane, to the military that keeps us safe and free, commerce, labor, agriculture, interior, every other function of government is borrowed. Now, no business in the world, none of your businesses, would be allowed to operate that way. The banks would come in and seize all the assets, and you would go into bankruptcy. So what's the future of this country if we can't get a hold of our spending? I have four little kids. I have the oldest son, Max, who's seven. Next son, Taylor, is four. Next son, Chase, is two. And we finally got our girl, and we have a nine-week, ten-week-old baby girl. My greatest fear is that one of them is going to come to me when they graduate high school or college and say, Dad, I'm moving to another country. I'm going to Brazil, whose stock market, by the way, was 100% up last year. I'm going to China, I'm going to Ireland, I'm going to pick your country. Because the opportunities in that country are better for me than the opportunities your generation left me. And I think at base, our responsibility as Americans is to make sure that the next generation has equal or better opportunities than we have. Because that's what our parents did for us. And that's what their parents did for them. So I'm very concerned about the fiscal health of our country concerned about a lot of things, probably more than we have time to talk about. Well, let me just give you a little bit of hope on this, is that it's not that hard to do. We can fix the fiscal health of this country if we're willing to make difficult decisions. In Florida, our legislative leaders have cut $7 billion from a $173 billion budget. Now, $7 billion in Washington, D.C. is a rounding error, but that's real money in Florida. And how did they do it? They sat around a room because they had to, and they had to make priority decisions. And they asked their agencies to cut 10% and use that 10% to pay against their uh, lack of revenue. I have a proposal, it's called the 2007 solution, where we would go back to 2007 level spending. And we would cap that spending for 10 years. Why would we do that? Why can we do that? Well, 2007 was the last year of the boom. If you go back to Florida, or I suspect any place in this country, and ask people, except for Washington, would you like to make as much money as you made in 2007? In Florida, when I ask that question, people nod their heads, because they made more in 07 than they make today. And if we went back to 2007 level spending, which is about two and a half trillion dollars in revenues, and we kept it there for 10 years, we balanced the budget in 13. Instead of having a $22 trillion debt in 20, we have a $6 trillion debt. We cut it in half. And we keep the Bush tax cuts, and all the other uh, tax issues and cuts that he was able to put in place. So it's not that hard to do if we have the courage of our convictions. And I know we can do it. We've done harder things in this country. We fought two wars against Nazi Germany, against Imperial Japan. We put a man on the moon. We can do this if we send the right people to Washington. And I think this November, you're going to see a lot more of the right people get elected. But it's not just a Democrat issue, it's not just a Republican issue, it's a moral issue. If we don't put this country on the right fiscal path, we will have done a tremendous disservice to our kids and to our grandkids. Let me talk to you one minute, if I can, about the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. We are hopeful, reports out last evening, that BP believes that they're going to be able to, if not completely, almost completely control the spill. Uh, in the next 48 hours, that would be the best news that any of us have heard in 48 days. Uh, this is an environmental and economic disaster for the Gulf of Mexico, whose effects we will not know for years. What you see on top of the water is not all that's going on. 
there are plumes of oil that reach out in ways that we don't yet understand, but the University of South Florida sent electronic subsea equipment yesterday out into the ocean and found traces of oil in places that are not reflected when you look at the visuals on top of the water. I was in Pensacola, further most west city in Florida, in the Panhandle, Saturday, and although the beaches are still beautiful and people are out there playing and enjoying them, you would walk and find these gloopy, sludge-like pieces of liquidy tar on the beach. And that's very disconcerting. It's very disconcerting for our economy because people are canceling their reservations. They are not going on charter boat to go fishing, the fish houses are canceling their orders, more based on perception now than based on reality. But how long will that last? And we worry about that oil getting into the loop current, which is a current that exists in the Gulf of Mexico that eventually brings it through the Keys and could, even if it continued, bring it up the Atlantic side. Florida is tremendously dependent upon the more than 80 million people who come to Florida each year as tourists. And if they don't come, What's that going to do to an economy that already has 12% unemployment, second worst in the country in foreclosures, and number one in being behind on payments? Uh, and Michael will tell you because they track this, you know, how many disconnects there are, how many late payments there are. Um, from the folks I talked to uh, from Michael's firm, it has been getting better. We are seeing good signs. The Carnival Cruise Line people tell me that more people are booking cruises than ever before. The Auto Nation people tell me that our state is doing better than Arizona, California, and Nevada, sort of the other states that had this explosive boom, that we're recovering better on car sales. So we are seeing some good signs of life, but this oil spill has the chance when we're just sort of getting off the ground to crash us back down. So we're very vigilant about it. I think that the administration has done a pathetic job of responding to this spill. They were caught flat-footed. The president seems less than concerned, and I've asked for him to spend a heck of a lot more time in the Gulf of Mexico. We as Floridians know about how to deal with disasters because we've had so many hurricanes run through our state. And when Jeb Bush was governor, he was on the ground 12, 14 hours a day, weeks after weeks after weeks. I was in the Attorney General's office. I was in the Emergency Operations Center with him. And he was the kind of leader that inspired confidence. And when people came to him and said, no, we can't get that done, he would push and make them get it done. And we need to see that out of the president. He can't stay up here and get a briefing in the cabinet room and expect that he's going to push people. Yesterday he said, and I'll say it here because we're among adults, that he was going to kick some ass, which one, I don't think is an appropriate comment for the president of the United States. I remember Roosevelt saying we were going to kick Hitler's ass. But he hasn't even talked to Tony Hayward, who's the CEO of BP, so I'm not sure whose ass he's going to kick. But we've seen the lack of an emotive gene in this president. And I want to see him down there on the Gulf leading. He's a bright guy. And the President of the United States gets down there and pushes to get something done. Obstacles will be overcome. Now, hopefully, we're going to find out that this solution has worked. But I think that for a president who criticized President Bush during Katrina, saying he was half-hearted and did half-measures, I think that indictment rings pretty true for this administration in this disaster. But we will remain hopeful. We still have uh, the most beautiful beaches in the world. We still want you to come, come down, visit, go fishing, buy that second home that you've always wanted in Florida. And, uh, I've already taken up too much of your time, but if I can answer any questions for you, we can talk about foreign policy, a lot of other things we can talk about this morning. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you Thank you so much.